Good day to you guys, CG Patrick here again and today I have to apologize first. I'm going to apologize for not uploading any video, any tutorials for about 3 months I think. But that's no longer a problem now because today I have a new exciting tutorial for you. Today I am going to be showing you how to create this procedurally designed circular heads up display. So just in advance this is what we are going to do. First we are going to start with just a plane right here and using few set of modifiers we are going to turn this into something like this and I am going to show you how you can achieve this kind of look using a procedural nodes and finally I am going to show you how you can animate this in a simple way and of course I'm going to show you how you can generate endless type of design using these procedural nodes so yeah without further ado let's start the tutorial now first let's delete everything in the viewport and I am going to add a plane right here. Switch to top view, tab into edit mode, and let's drag this right about here. Just hold down control to snap it into grid like this. And basically what we are going to do with this is we are going to add a mirror modifier and we are going to mirror this in X axis like this. And we are going to add an array modifier and array it couple of times in this direction and finally we are going to add a simple deform modifier and bend it along Z in 360 like this alright now to do that go here in our modifiers tab and the first modifier that we are going to add is a subsurf modifier I'm just gonna leave the render to 1 for now and click this simple and the next modifier will be the mirror modifier and don't forget to check the clipping here and the next modifier will be the array modifier let's set the count to 6 and just enable the merge here and finally let's add a simple deform modifier now instead of twist let's switch that to band and here in axis let's set this to Z and let's turn the angle to 360 right here okay now let's tab into edit mode again select these vertices right here drag this upward like this and then control R and let's add in a couple of edge loop there okay now we are going to separate these faces by pressing Y so I'm just gonna select this face and press Y and just repeat the process to the rest of the faces here and now I'm just gonna drag this away from each other like this alright now we just finish our first step okay not bad now let's go to shading tab here I'm just gonna click this button right here and I'm just gonna narrow this down to darken our background and of course let's go in our properties tab and we are going to enable our bloom options here and of course it's a good habit to rename our object in the viewport okay now with our material selected in the viewport I'm just gonna click new to add new material to that now in advance this is our node setup that we are aiming for now let's do the fun part all right now first I'm just gonna delete this principal BSTL we don't actually gonna be needing that now let's add in the following node first let's add in a mix shader here and connect this to surface next let's add in a transparent BSDF an emission shader the transparent will be on the top and the emission will be in the bottom all right next let's add in a color ramp node and connect this to the factor of the mix shader and here instead of linear I'm just gonna switch this to constant and here I'm just gonna invert this like this all right and next node will be the Voronoi texture this is going to be the main texture that generates the design all right now I'm just gonna connect this distance to the factor of the color ramp now let's tweak some settings here let's set this to F2 change this to Chebyshev and I am just gonna leave the scale to about 2 alright now if you have node wrangler enabled just control T to bring in our mapping node right there now in the texture coordinate here instead of generated let's switch this to UV alright 
Now this is the perfect time for us to enable our transparency option. Just press N in the keyboard and here in option tab, let's change the blend mode to alpha hashed and shadow mode to none. Now here with our node set up alone, in the mapping node here, we can now generate endless type of design by just tweaking this location, rotation and the scale. You can also tweak the scale of the Voronoi here and also the color ramp. But we need more specific control for this one. We are going to unwrap this using cube projection. So with our object selected, tap into edit mode and I am going to select everything and press U in the keyboard and select cube project. All right, now it will look like this in our viewport. Don't worry, it's okay since we are using UV in our texture coordinate. We can now go here in our UV editor window and now we can change the individual appearance of each faces in the viewport. Now, keep in mind that this part right here is to control the individual wings and here in our node setup will be the overall procedural control. Now from this part, it's up to you to explore your own design by just tweaking the settings available here. In my case, I first tweak the individual wings in the UV editor window and then tweak the overall design in the mapping node right there. And after a few experimentation, I came up with this kind of look. So now next step, we'll be adding a color variation to this and we are going to make it animatable. So first thing, I'm gonna go here in our modifiers tab and we are going to apply all of the modifiers that we added here. So I'm going to apply this from top to bottom like this okay and now with our modifiers applied we are going to move our origin in the center of the circle here because right now if we rotate this it will not rotate the way we want it so i'm going to tab into edit mode i'm gonna select these edges right here press shift s and cursor to select it and now the cursor will move exactly to the center of our object right there and i'm going to tab back to object mode right click to that and go to set origin and click origin to 3d cursor okay now our origin is in the middle of the circle and now we can rotate this like this all right now i'm just gonna zero out our location transform here and now it's perfectly in the center so next we are going to separate all of the rings there so we can animate it individually all right so i'm just gonna tab into edit mode press p and separate by loose part so now if we tap back to object mode we can now rotate them individually and of course because we are using the same material to this one we can still manipulate our mapping here all right so now next let's add a color variation to this one so i'm just gonna shift a here add a color ramp connect the color to emission right there and i'm just gonna switch this to constant and next node we are going to add an object info node now in this node i'm just going to connect the random to the factor of the color ramp now you can add a color to this one so i'm just going to go here and change this to something like this and let's click this plus icon to add another handle and i'm just going to switch this to yellow and this one i'm just going to switch this to white and i'm going to add another handle right here and switch this to blue all right now it's just a matter of increasing the strength of emission here all right not bad that's perfect and take note we are using only one material to do all the works for us how cool is that right and now let's add in a simple animation to this one so i'm just gonna split the screen right here and switch this to graph editor now we are going to animate the mapping here in the scale we are going to animate the y location so i'm just gonna right click to that and select insert single keyframe okay now i'm gonna go here and search for that y scale right here and now let's go here under modifiers tab and we are going to add a noise modifier to that one and now we, if we hit play it will move like this so what we are going to do here is i'm just gonna set the strength right here to 0.2 okay and i'm just gonna scale this to about 10 all right that's looking fine now now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to select this button right here to copy this noise modifier and we are going to paste it in x scale 
So I'm just going to right click to this and select insert single keyframe and make sure to select this one and click this button to paste it. Okay. And now it, let's change the offset here. All right. Now that's looking fine. So next let's animate a random rotation to each of the circle there. Here in our rotation, we are going to animate the Z rotation. So I'm just going to right click to this, insert single keyframe. And I'm just going to go here, make sure to select that. Okay. And now I'm just going to add a noise modifier. And then if we hit play, it will move crazy like this. So what I am going to do is just increase the scale here to about 30. All right. Now that's perfect. Again, just like before, click this button right here to copy this modifier and select the next circle there and go in our rotation, right click, insert single keyframe, and select the rotation right here and click this button to paste. And now let's change the offset so it's not that uniform. All right. And now I am going to repeat the same process to the rest of the circle. So I'm just going to speed up the video from here. And just like that, we just finished our hot design. Take a look at that. How awesome is this, right? With just a few steps. And of course, you can always go back here if you want to change the appearance of the design. And it's up to you to animate the values available here. All right. Just for an inspiration, here is what I did with this idea. Don't worry, you can do this also. Just remember to put your own personality on it. You're unique. We have a lot of ideas in the industry. What we don't have is you. So don't be afraid to put yourself in your work. All right. So that's all about it, guys. Thank you for watching this video. The next tutorial will be the Iron Man heads up display. So it's going to be exciting. I know 